So in this video, we're going to talk about how to analyze data that we collected in the crystal violet lab yesterday using the spectrophotometer in order to try to figure out the order of the reaction with respect to crystal violet. So what I have compiled here on in the yellow columns are time and absorbance data that was averaged for the entire um, six groups that completed the lab, so all six of you guys. What we want to do over here on the right eventually is to create three different plots. One for the zeroth order, which we know is concentration, so I put concentration here of CV versus time. First order, natural log of concentration versus time. And second order, one over concentration versus time. We're going to create those three sets of data, then graph each one in order to figure out which um, order uh, CV is respect to, or another way of saying that is just what order is the reaction with respect to CV, crystal violet. So first thing to do, we have this absorbance data. We need to convert that into concentration. So Beer-Lambert's law over here says absorbance equals A times B times C. For crystal violet, A, the molar absorptivity constant, is 87,000 molarity to the negative 1. So if we want to solve for C, we want to convert absorbance into C, I'm going to rewrite this equation and solve for C. So I'm going to divide by A times B on both sides. So I'm going to be left with C equals absorbance divided by A times B. Remember, B is our path length, which is 1, 1 centimeter. So it doesn't really matter since I'm dividing by 1. So what I'm left with is A is equal to, excuse me, C, concentration, is equal to the absorbance divided by the molar absorptivity constant. So what I need to do is I need to take this number and divide it by 87,000, okay? Well, instead of doing that with a calculator or on paper, that's super boring and annoying, let's use the computer to help us out. So using spreadsheets, this time in Google Drive, but also in Microsoft Excel, is a really practical and helpful skill to manipulating a lot of data at one time. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this box right here. Notice I've already copied the time data over for you, okay? What we want to do is we want to say the number in this box is going to be equal to something. We want it to be equal to the absorbance divided by the absorptivity constant. So I'm going to take this number, that's my absorbance, C5, divided by 87,000. I'm going to type that in and I'm going to hit enter. Boom. So what the computer's done for me is it's already done that calculation. As you can see up here in the top left, it says f of x, my function, is equal to C5, which is this number, divided by 87,000. Great, it did it once for me. So I could keep typing it in again. I could go boom, equals to this number, divided by 87,000. And I could type that over and over and over again. Or, what's cool about Excel and spreadsheets, is I can copy not the number in the cell, but the function, the f of x. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go file, excuse me, edit, copy. Now what the computer has done is it's copied that function. Now I'm going to highlight all of the other cells that I want to fill the numbers in for. So all the way down to 225 seconds. Now I'm going to go edit, paste. Ooh, cool. So what did the computer do? It took each one of these values, depending on the row that it's in, and divided it by 87,000. So if we look over here, it, it took the number in block C5, divided by 87,000. Here. It did the block in C6, C7, C8. It did the whole thing for us. That's pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for natural log of the concentration. So since these are the concentration values, I need to take the natural log of those. So I type in equals. Don't forget to type in the equal sign. You can't just type anything in right away. Otherwise, it doesn't know it's a function. And natural log, I'm just going to type in ln. And you can see it already pops up. It knows the code that that means the logarithm of a number. Then I put open parentheses. What do I want to take the natural log of? I want the natural log of the concentration, which I just got. Boom. So natural log of that number, I hit enter. There it is. Again, I could down below type the same function equals natural log parentheses of this number. Boom. Or I can just copy this function, edit copy, highlight all the data points, Go edit paste, boom. All my data is solved and converted to natural log of CV, of crystal violet. 
Last but not least, 1 over crystal violet. So you might already be thinking, oh, I kind of get how to do this, Char. If you're not sure, just go ahead and watch. I'm going to type in equals, and now I want to do 1 divided by concentration. So I'm just going to type 1 divided by concentration. Not natural log of concentration, concentration. Boom, enter. I'm going to edit, copy that function, and I'm going to paste it all the way through. Boom. To get those data points. Cool. So now I have all the tables with all the data that I need to make these graphs. That's part one of the lab, of the analysis here. The second part is we actually need to create the graphs. So how do I do that? In order to create a chart in a Google Spreadsheet, it's very similar to Microsoft Excel, what you want to do is highlight the data that you want to create a graph of, that you want to plot. Usually you put the X on what's ever in the x-axis on the furthest most left column and what's going to go in the y so this is kind of like our x and this is going to be our y for each of these we always want time on the x-axis and I highlight all the data so to make a zeroth order graph that's concentration versus time I'm going to highlight all the data so I click it down it's all highlighted you can see that box highlights it all I click insert chart now I have all these options of types of graphs that I want. I click charts in the middle. Do I want a line, an area, column, bar, scatter, pie? There's so many options. What we want is we want a scatter plot. We want to just put all these data points onto the graph. Then it gives me two options, a bubble or a scatter. We want this top one with the red and the blue. And boom, it gives you a little preview of what the data looks like. I click insert, and I'm done. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and just drag this chart you know, down to the bottom here, just by clicking on it and moving it down. Takes a little bit of time here. But now I want to remember what this chart is, so I'm going to do some editing to it. I can just click on the chart title, and I want to name it with my Y versus X. So whatever's on the Y axis, I'm going to type that first. So in this case, it's concentration of crystal violet versus time. I'm going to also remind myself that this is zeroth order. That's how I'm going to label this. Okay. On the x-axis down here, I can label that. This is time in seconds. I just click on it here to type in that. And then on the y-axis, I can click on the y-axis to edit the values, but I can't edit the name. So if I want to edit the name, oh, it didn't save this here. So make sure you hit enter to save it. I want concentration versus time, zeroth order. This little triangle the top right corner is going to give you everything you need. So I click on this, and I go to Advanced Edit. Now what I can do under Customize is I can change the name. So you can see here, Title. I could retype the title in if I wanted. More importantly to me, though, I want to label the axis of the up and down, the vertical. So here where it says Axis, I'm going to select Left Vertical. And I'm going to type in Concentration of Crystal Violet. I'm going to put the Units. Molarity. If I, if I click on where it says left vertical, I could go back to horizontal and change the time to something else if I wanted, but we want it in time, so I'm going to leave it the same. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to figure out how accurate is this data. So in order to do that, we want to plot a trend line. Remember, we want to look for the function that's going to be the most linear. So for the trend line, I'm going to, down here, it's, what this is going to do for me is draw a best fit line. So of the options, I want linear. I want something that is in a straight line. I don't want an exponential function or a polynomial. So I'm going to click linear. And as we can see in light blue, a best fit line has been drawn for us. Okay. There's a few more cool things that you can do. Um, for example, let's say we want the equation of that line, y equals mx plus b. If I click on label custom, use equation, I can get the um, equation of the line by moving my mouse over it, okay? Or I could have none. It's up to you. Whatever you want. Use equation. We're good to go. This value is super important, the R squared value. This is something that is very important in probability and statistics. What the R squared value does is tells you how 
uh, close is your data to what you want. So the R squared value, if I check this, I'm going to get a value for the R squared. The R squared number, we want it to be as close to 1 as possible. The closer the R squared is to 1, that means the closer these data points are towards the line. As we can see, they're not super close, so we would expect our R squared value to be a little bit further away from 1 than maybe if it's a little bit more accurate. Okay? So that's how we would edit our chart. That's how we would have all the great function stuff that we want. Okay? If we hit update, we can see there is our chart. Here is our plot. Here is our best fit. Your next step is to create two more graphs for each of the other um, data sets that you have. So for first order, again, we'll go over here. We'll highlight all of our data. You'll go to insert, chart, charts, scatter, boom, insert. There's our data. We'll want to drag this down so it's somewhere where we can manipulate it. And you'll want to do the same thing as before. You'll want to label the chart title, label the axes, get the trend line and the R squared value. Once you've created all three graphs, you should be able to figure out the order of the reaction with respect to crystal violet, no problem.